Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on static electricity. The topic of this video is triboelectric charging, and here's what we wish to figure out. What is triboelectric charging, and how does it occur, and how can you predict the results of triboelectric charging? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. Triboelectric charging is one of several processes that can be used to charge a neutral object. This particular process involves bringing the particles of one object in close contact with the particles of the second object. The two objects ideally would be composed of different materials, and most oftentimes the process is carried out by rubbing the two objects together so that the particles of one material and the particles of another material have maximum contact with one another. The result of the process is that both objects become charged and charged with an opposite type of charge. An example of this would be if you took a vinyl balloon, like this one, and you rubbed it on human hair, like maybe this one, something like this. This rubbing process gets the particles in close contact with each other, such that the two objects can be charged triboelectrically. One object becomes positive, the other negative, and the result is that they attract. When it comes to charging processes, we always want to know what's going on under the hood, so to speak, at the particle level. In the case of triboelectric charging, we explain it by the transfer of electrons from one object to another object. We've already learned from a previous video that neutral objects become charged positively whenever they lose electrons, and neutral objects become charged negatively whenever they gain electrons. So in the triboelectric charging process, electrons are transferred from the material that loves them the least to the material that loves them the most. The result is that one object gains electrons and becomes charged negatively, and the other object loses electrons and becomes charged positively. The example we've been talking about is the rubbing of a vinyl balloon on human hair. And we happen to know from looking it up on best resources that the material vinyl loves electrons more than the material human hair. So when you rub these two materials together, there's a transfer of electrons from the human hair to the vinyl balloon. The result is, since the human here has lost electrons, it has become charged positively. And since the vinyl has gained electrons, it becomes charged negatively. And when you're done, the two objects attract. A big part of our model for triboelectric charging is the property known as electron affinity. Electron affinity describes the relative amount of love or affinity or attraction that a material has for electrons. During the triboelectric charging process, electrons are transferred from the material that has the lowest electron affinity to the material with the greatest electron affinity. That leaves the material with the lowest electron affinity charged positively. The material with the highest electron affinity becomes charged negatively. Let's consider this example. A piece of glass is rubbed with silk and the glass becomes positive. We can use this information to determine which of the two materials has the greatest electron affinity. In this case, electrons must be transferred off of the glass, making it positive, onto the silk, making it negative. So since the silk grabbed the electrons from the glass, the silk must have the highest electron affinity. In this demonstration, we're going to learn how to test any two materials for their relative electron affinity. The demonstration begins by taking two tapes which are taped together and pulling them apart briskly. This charges both tapes triboelectrically. I'm going to take the bottom tape and I'm going to bring it near paper bits and I observe it attracts paper bits. That tells me it's charged. I'm going to place it on a string above the table on the right side. Then I take the top tape, I bring it near the neutral paper bits as well, and I notice its attraction. The top tape also is charged, I'm going to put it hanging from a string on the left side of the table. Now I'm going to take a vinyl balloon and rub it on wool. I happen to know this causes the balloon to become charged negatively. Yep, it attracts paper bits. Now I bring it near the top tape and I notice its attraction, and near the bottom tape and I notice its repulsion. So the top tape is charged positively, it's the one on the left. The bottom tape is charged negatively, it's the one on the right. Now I'm going to take two materials, cotton from a sock and vinyl from a PVC tube. I'm going to rub them together. The PVC tube is charged because it interacts with paper bits. Now I bring it near the negative tape and notice repulsion. I bring it near the positive tape and I notice attraction. That means the PVC tube is charged negatively. Evidently, it must have a greater electron affinity than the cotton since when rubbed together, the PVC becomes charged negatively. 
By repeating this procedure for a variety of materials, you would be able to determine the relative electron affinity of all tested materials. And the result is you could create what's known as a triboelectric series. A triboelectric series is a listing of a collection of materials that are ranked in order of their relative affinity or love for electrons. This chart at the right is a triboelectric series for 15 different materials. At the top of the table is Teflon. It's the one that loves electrons the most. And at the bottom of the table, is rabbit fur. It has the smallest electron affinity. Materials that are ranked highest on this table will always become charged negative when rubbed with materials that are below them. For instance, if you took vinyl near the top of the table with one of the higher electron affinities and rubbed it with rabbit fur located at the bottom of the table with the least electron affinity, the vinyl would become charged negatively and the rabbit fur charged positively. Hey, here's three practice questions. Let's see if you got this stuff. Pause the video, use the table at the right to answer the questions, and when ready, press play. I'll talk about the answers. Well, here we go. If you take Teflon and rub it with rabbit fur, you'd expect the Teflon to be charged negatively and rabbit fur positive. This is because Teflon is higher in the table and has a greater electron affinity. It pulls the electrons off the rabbit fur. The rabbit fur becomes charged positively. The same reasoning would tell you that vinyl would become charged negatively when rubbed with paper. It's higher in the charts and has a greater electron affinity and thus pulls electrons off of the paper. The paper would become charged positively. In question three, material X is not in the table. And when you rub it with cotton, you might observe that material X becomes positive. This would tell you that material X is lower in the table than cotton is, but you don't know how low in the table it is, so there's no way to predict whether it would become positive or negative when rubbed with wool. If it was below cotton and above wool, then the material X would become charged negatively, but if it was below both the cotton and the wool, material X would be charged positively when rubbed with, it, when rubbed with the wool. During electrostatic process, total amount of charge is conserved. We often put it this way, charge is neither created nor destroyed, but only transferred from one object to the other object in the form of electrons. If you were to take a vinyl balloon and give it several brisk rubs with some animal fur, you would end up transferring as many as two trillion electrons from the animal fur to the balloon. Before the rubbing began, the total system charge of the two objects together would have been zero since both objects start neutral. But if charge is to be conserved, then after the rubbing is complete, the total amount of system charge should also be zero. You might ask, how can that be if both objects are charged? Well, it goes something like this. The human here, having lost two trillion electrons, would have a charge of approximately 300 nanocoulombs positive nanocoul 300, but that vinyl balloon would have a charge of negative 300 nanocoulombs. Now you can do the math. Positive 300 plus negative 300 adds up to zero nanocoulombs. Charge is conserved during a triboelectric process. At this time in every video, I like to help you out with an action plan. But before I help you out, could I ask you to help us out? Like if you enjoyed the video, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and tap the bell to get notifications, or even leave a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here's three resources, each one from our website. You'll find links to each of these three resources in the description section below. There's a concept builder, a Minds on Physics mission, and a tutorial page any one of which would help make this learning stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.